This is the talk of Music City Real Estate. Welcome back to another episode of the Talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. My name is Monty Moore with Realty One Group Music City. Hey, and Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and my mortgage team. Carrie Ann, we're every week we're coming back and we're posting, we're sharing episodes full of Nashville real estate value. Yes, and you can follow along and subscribe at the talk of musiccity.com. Got any questions? Ask away at questions at talkmusiccity.com. Yes. Well, we have another episode. We've got a special guest we here. We do. Well, I've been I've been trying to get this lady on our show for months. She's an amazing lady. A month, Miss Mich- Mrs. Michelle Cruz of Synergy Network. I'm sorry, Synergy Realty Network. Yes, welcome, Michelle. Welcome, welcome Michelle. Thank welcome. you. Welcome. We're glad to have you here. Thanks for taking the risk. You know, this is kind of a you know enter into <laughs> unknown zone here when we get going behind a microphone, right, Carrie Ann? It is, but we <laughs> love to talk and share all kinds of good things, and we're really blessed to have you with us. So thanks, Michelle, for being here. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Michelle. You've been in the real estate business for how long now? I've been in the business since 2005. 2005. Wow, Holy yes. smokes. When did you and your, it was, it's your husband. Yes, yes, my husband, Dwayne Cruz. Um, we started, we actually started, he started Synergy Realty Network in 2009. Okay. Uh, right at the hell, at the height of the, uh, probably the worst housing right. recession uh, this yeah. country's ever experienced. Mm-hmm. Wow. Amazing. So, yeah, let, let's, I want to get into that before you, before the end of the show today, because I would love to hear the thought process of that kind of radical thinking of uh, what what the uh, the business model of Synergy Network that's that's I'm ex- I'm looking forward to that. Yes, but before we get started, we do have a sponsor this time. We do. We, we do. do. We Thank do. you so much to Music City Removal. Yes. Music City Removal is the number one junk removal service in Nashville from residential, commercial, and construction. They're experts in ridding you of junk. Their cost includes labor and dumping fees without any hidden or added expenses. Whether you need a full clean out or just one item removed, they have you covered. Music City Removal Team knows the importance of and of respect and trust while in someone else's home. That's a big deal, you know? Mm-hmm. They understand the inconvenience of junk left behind by previous, previous homeowners. Wow, have we had some of those recently. Yeah. <laughs> what are people thinking when they leave that old couch on the front porch. What are they thinking, Carrie Ann? Don't you, aren't you going to use it? They, <laughs> <laughs> what do they say? Somebody else's junk is another's treasure, something so like that? We do want to encourage you to reach out to Music City Removal for a free site esti- uh, on-site estimate. Just go to musiccityremoval.com. That's musiccityremoval.com. Yes, Music City Removal, because clutter ain't cute. <laughs> <laughs> that it's not. <laughs> it is not. Very good. Well, we're back here with yes. Michelle Cruz. Hey, Michelle. Um, and so are you the broker owner? I am a broker co-owner. My husband, Dwayne Cruz, is the principal uh, broker. Wonderful. With Synergy Realty Network. So welcome again. Thank you. So before we go into the real estate part of it, let's go into the personal part of it. How do you like working with your husband? Well, I work with my wife is why I'm asking. You know, and it, it I would takes, never work with either. It, so and that's, that's I'm not that's, your spouse that's a whole working other, with a spouse. That's a, that's a whole other <laughs> conversation. But I think there's probably realtors out there that are are working with their spouse or yeah. thinking about working with their spouse or contemplating the idea of possibly maybe someday down the road it might be a good idea working with their spouse. Michelle, what do you think? You know, for us, I mean, we're risk takers, right? We got mm-hmm. married in uh, Las Vegas 25 years ago. Wow. <laughs> wow. Were you been, like three then Elvis, or what? I was only about 12. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we don't we don't share. We're 29 forever, Monty. <laughs> yeah, but you know, for us, it, it works out really well. Um, Dwayne is, uh, like I said, he's the principal broker and mm-hmm. he takes charge. He takes the lead as it relates to the legalities and uh, broker questions and supporting our team of about 160 agents wow. on that front. Wow. Amazing. Uh, my background is more uh, sales focused Mm -hmm. and uh, strategy and assisting the agents in getting deals done. Wonderful. So you're still active in the market? Yes. Awesome. I think that's really, really important that uh, the leadership of a company Mm -hmm. has a non-competing broker um, involved there because it's really hard, I think, if if a broker hasn't been in the field for a while, I think it's hard to relate to the changes that are taking place Mm because they're changing so rapidly, you know? I mean, I've told our agents... I'm not happy the fact that I feel the pain you're feeling regularly because I'm still out there in sales as well. But like you, I'm, I'm not competing. <clears throat> I'm not competing with my agents. 
but I, I can feel their pain because I've dealt with some of these disruptors out there and I know, and that's, it, it better equips us, I think, to help them get around those challenges, you know? Absolutely, Monty. Um, you know, Dwayne do, is, does not sell. He's a non-competing broker and, mm -hmm. and for us, that works best to focus on the agents. Right. But for me, I want to understand, just like you right. shared, the challenges that mm -hmm. they're going through because it is an ever-changing industry and market. Absolutely. And in my industry, the same same difference. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it'd be easy to be a manager in the back office and telling people how it should be. Or how, or how it not, used to be. Or how it used to yeah, be, right. Exactly. And how if you're not living it every day, you know, and every day in our industry is different, you know. Like, like our business, your business has changed oh, so rapidly. yes. You know? I mean, guidelines change <clears throat> on a regular basis. And, you know, how to get a loan approved, you know, is, is different how we used to do it, even though it's, there's some similarities. But, mm -hmm. you know, being able to understand the pressures the grind of the everyday, you know, just the, the stresses of, you know, where we all have different competition and maybe that is online mm -hmm. lending companies, yeah. you know, or, or large real, tech, real estate, real estate companies. companies, things like that. So yeah, everybody, we, it's great to, I think, to be in the everyday grind. Absolutely. And for us, um, Carrie Ann, we depend on professionals like yourself to, we do not have in-house mortgage. Um, it's not something we are going to do mm -hmm. because it's not what we do. It's not what we're good at. Sure. So we look um, to you and, and CMG to provide that level of expertise and professionalism. And it allows our agents to work with a, with brokers like yourself, yeah. mortgage lenders, um, to best meet their clients' needs. Right. And that's so important, I think. you know, And, and, and if we all kind of focus on the main goal, which is the customer, you know, and, and trying to make a difference every day. I think that's, we're winning. Michelle, let's go back to working with your husband. Yes. <laughs> okay. So let's say this, that there's somebody listening and they're, they're contemplating. Um, did you guys, have you guys always just known each other's, I mean, you knew what your lane was and you stayed in that lane or have there been any challenges along, along the way that you can share? Yes, we absolutely stay in our respective lanes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I worked for Xerox Global Services for 12 years prior to starting okay. uh, in real estate. Okay. As a sales rep? No, on the okay. consulting side. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so when I, when Dwayne started uh, Synergy Realty Network in 2009, I was actually on site uh, working for John Whelan Homes Custom Home Builder. Oh, okay. So Wonderful. we didn't actually start together. We mm -hmm. ended up t t working together. Mm -hmm. um, and it it certainly is a mutual respect for each other's sure. strengths. Mm -hmm. um, I jokingly say we we set it opposite ends of the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I, I highly recommend it if your skill set um, aligns, you know, for couples to work together. I think certainly you're going to be, you know, more vested with your partner, your life partner, than maybe a team, right? Mm -hmm. So, sure. So, why not? As long as you have that balance, I think it's very important. And let me ask you this question on this. My, my wonderful wife will appreciate this. Have you, or let's assume that you have learned how to, how, how do you shut it off when you get home? <laughs> we don't, right? <laughs> I wish I could say that we do, but we just don't. It's our livelihood. It's, right. you know, it's it's what we do it's every It's your baby day. there, isn't it? It really is. Take care and, of your baby. And we're committed, and, and, and especially Dwayne, from a brokerage standpoint, um, he is available seven days a week wow. at all right. hours of the day or night, mm -hmm. because that's when deals happen, mm -hmm. right? Deals happen, just like for you, Carrie. Oh yeah. When, when people are off work, when right? If it was only sp you know specific to you know eight to five Monday through Friday, you know, no, right. that's not right. how that works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that's why people get into real estate so they have time freedom. Did you forget about that? And that's actually why they get into lending because you have you know you can schedule out everything yourself, isn't that right. funny? Yeah. So you just work all the time rather than have a, have any time. It's funny. Off. We have I have my work husband, you know, my partner <laughs> in crime. He and I've been working together thirteen years, and so it's funny because we don't leave it at the office either. Like we'll all go out to dinner and we're we're talking about lending you know at dinner and um our other halves are like yeah not here Just stop talking about it <laughs> because i feel like it's an everyday conversation you know about how we can make a difference and you know keep it going so yeah so for somebody listening that's contemplating it you'd, you'd say you know do it or just I mean, how do you, how does somebody determine that that's going to be a win situation? I wonder. Well, you know, I think it all goes back to passion, right? What are, what are mm -hmm. you actually, it goes, it goes back to goals. What sure. are you seeking in life? What is it that you want to accomplish more than anything else? Mm -hmm. Right. And for us, you know, even if we work harder and, and 
more, it's still, I think real estate provides a tremendous opportunity when coupled with the right technology and the right brokerage and the right culture to live a very fulfilling life. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, you know, whether it's good or bad, you can take your work with you because you have the technology that allows right. you to do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So your thumbs up if somebody's thinking about joining to, as, a, as partners. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it, it really does depend. We don't want to have to bring any marriage counseling. Into it. <laughs> we do enough of that with our customers, don't we? <laughs> but, you know, if their skill sets um, complement one, one another mm-hmm. and they are sound in their relationship and other areas outside of work, I, mm-hmm. I think it's something certainly worth exploring exploring <laughs> I you, would not <laughs> you still would not I'm huh? set too much of a controller so yeah, yeah. yeah yeah well I, I mean Connie and I have struggled with that you know I want it done my way and she wants it done yeah. her way and fortunately for us uh, her her lane is different than my lane she doesn't do sales I don't do tech I don't do technology sure. I don't do the technical part of it she's a she's our operations manager so I, I'm really blessed to have somebody that's not just out there ready fire aim like me. Mm-hmm. But uh, is in control. So, it, but I that, guess there's a plus too, though, that they understand everything in your world. You know, from that from the business standpoint, that's one know, of the biggest that is, pluses, that's, I think, that is, is a huge plus. Yeah. Where if the other person's not in that industry, and you come home and you're complaining about this or you're talking about that, that does cause another stress level because <laughs> they don't get it, they don't understand it. You know, they just see you, you know, working so hard, but also maybe sometimes bringing you know, that home, that, that level of stress home too. Uh, Absolutely. I think that, um, it's, you know, (laughs) Dwayne's very laid back. I'm probably not as laid back. So (laughs) that balances, you know, it out. Yeah. Um, That's nice. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. I just, it just dawned on me as we're sitting here that I thought, you have something in common. I didn't ask that question because I don't think everybody can do it. And I know Connie and I've had our challenges. Our biggest challenge now is probably just ever turning it off, you know? But at the same time, I've never been more passionate or more excited about my business mm-hmm. because you know th- this is my baby. All my career, I have avoided having very many agents. I've had teams before, but I just wanted to go out and sell real estate. Well, now this is the highest point of my life in my real estate industry, in, in my real estate career, of having a, a company, a, a growing company of agents who are succeeding, and I get a bigger thrill out of their success than my own. And I bet you, I bet you can relate to that. Absolutely. And you know what's something that's so exciting about being in the real estate industry and other industries that allow you to run and operate your own business is that when you're working for corporate America, you're not going to, you're going to miss out a lot on life. And I don't mean just all the great things in life of taking vacations, but family things. I mean, we've all faced tragedy, right, in Mm -hmm. our lives and needing and wanting to be with family members. And it's just for you know when you mention when you ask about working together as a couple it it really goes a little bit deeper than that are you the person that can work independently and run and operate your own successful business whatever that means to you sure. right. right yeah right. huge right. yeah yeah, I think a lot of folks forget that you're running your own business when you're when you're in real estate. You're you know, absolutely are, Monty. Absolutely, whether you are with a traditional brokerage or like us, like mm-hmm. uh, Realty One and Synergy Realty Network, not running necessarily what is considered a, a traditional brokerage. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, the, that part of the job description will never change. You mm-hmm. are a business owner mm-hmm. responsible oh, for, sure. for your own success. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. So speaking of of uh, our business model being a little bit different. I just got, I want to give a shout out to Dwayne, okay? He and I don't know each other, but he is an icon of mine because he, at a time that wasn't popular, he stepped out in, in, a, in a vision. I don't know where it came from. I'd love to talk to him sometime here on our show or, or in person. I mean, or in, or in person or in uh, just a lunch or something sometime. I'd love to hear the thought process of going from a traditional environment of the typical, the common split type arrangement to a office where the agents are allowed to keep a hundred percent of their commission. Did, did you, when you, could you, can you share for a minute how you guys had that conversation? You must've, I mean, did he catch you off guard like I caught Connie off guard when I said my brother? No, it really did not catch me off guard at all. Was it a mutual process that you guys came to that point? 
Yes, okay. um, because we are at the core, we are independent, and mm-hmm. that, that's how we operate. That's how we think. We mm-hmm. are strategists. We are problem solvers. So, mm-hmm. so I can just share with you my perspective of how Dwayne approached this. He was with a, tra- a, a very reputable traditional brokerage, right. and that was fantastic. Right. But what it really came down to, Monty, was um, seeing some of the changes in the industry. And what I mean by that is, is the client the clients, the sellers and the, especially the sellers, the listing side, right? Mm -hmm. Saying we want more, we want something different, whether that's a a negotiable um, commission rate or what the case may be, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're with, his experience when he was with a traditional brokerage was that with that split, you are paying a traditional brokerage that is ultimately in a big way promoting that brokerage which is totally fine right. but what it what he felt what he recognized was that it still left a, a large um marketing budget need to promote himself oh right individually right mm-hmm. because you, right. you let's just say you do the split and that's great and you're paying for these things but if you want something different or you want to promote brand you then which it really is brand you that we believed that to be true mm-hmm. then and today. We believed that the consumer was doing business with the agent. Mm-hmm. There, there came a transition, uh, probably in the seventies, I would say, mm-hmm. when um, it, it, that's actually when the hundred percent commission model first started, right? right? right, right. And so at that point, um, what happened was the. The brokerage was no longer the big brand that the consumer went to to do business, mm-hmm. right? Sure. So, and even over time, that's become even more true. The Absolutely. consumer does business with the agent, right? Absolutely. They don't mm-hmm. care what color the sign is in the yard. They, don't, they could care less. Well, I mean, it's true. And, and Carrie Ann spoke to this too. She, you know, she works with a lot of agents and even she'll say, I don't know what, I don't know what brokerage they're with they, mm-hmm. because it's just hard to keep up with that. Mm-hmm. So that was and the she thing. doesn't care, God bless her. She just she loves everybody. Love she does. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> Look at that heart. <laughs> she does. She loves everyone and, and treats everyone really good so well, what's so cool about the real estate i think community is i went to the williamson county association um awards yeah and there's just one large room of so many people just cheering everybody on it just was a cool experience you know which is a little different for lending i think <laughs> you know and we're working they're working really hard to change that culture mm. where we're all one in it for all type of thing but yeah. what was that was just so cool to see everybody really excited you know um for for everybody you know and i'll go into events and we have you here you know um with two different brokerages in our in, in, on this show but i'll go to another event and it'll be multiple people you know in different organizations so it's ex- it's really exciting to see that everybody really supports each other in the Absolutely. real estate world i think the the brokers and the agents that are in it for long term i think they they understand that they've got to, you've got to come from a place of abundance, sure. not, not of lack. You've got mm-hmm. to come from a place of there's enough for all of us, and let's lift up those that are, that do have their act together, doing a good, great, a great job. So it makes it harder for the ones that don't really know what they're doing sure. and not doing a great job. You know, that's my attitude mm-hmm. on it, anyhow. Now, kind of going back to what you were referencing with Dwayne's thought process, which was great. He probably at the time, and there's many of us that have a certain personality, a certain DNA that uh, truly get the concept of I am the CEO of my own little business, which is right here, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm able to focus on branding me, not so much maybe the company. Um, And that's why I brought two no-name companies to town. I I was comfortable with that because the good news is I didn't have to jump on somebody else's reputation, good or bad. I can create it for myself. And I was leading with my name, not the company's name, right? So, But I had that DNA. And so sometimes we bring on sales folks, which we're about to have... um, a real estate blaze coming up that is talking all about the disc because mm. um, and how you can increase your sca- sales through disc. But if we don't understand our personalities, some of us aren't, you know, forward uh, I'd entrepreneurial say, yeah, minded, right? Exactly. And yeah. they do need a different type of setup, you know. And so, do do you think? You know, Carrie, I think Monty and I would probably say. I mean, I think just to be in real estate, period, just to be successful real estate business owner mm-hmm. as an individual agent, you have to have an entrepreneurial mindset. Sure. Because you know what, no matter where you are, 
no one is going to bring the business to you. Mm-hmm. You've, you've got to go out and you've got to find the business, you know, convert that business, fill your pipeline, and then handle marketing operations all the way down to closing, right? right? So, but and I or guess, hire it out to be the CEO, right? Spend a little money to be able to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Just like you, you yeah, know, yeah. like you often say, you know, source that stuff out, which is fantastic. But what we felt, what we wanted to do was create a company that would empower agents very much like what I think Monty is doing today with Realty One is to empower agents without sacrifice. Because to be successful in real estate, well, first of all, we live in a very litigious society. Broker support has to be second to none. Mm -hmm. Right. Every agent in this business needs strong broker support when they need it, right? Sure. Not, you know, not go look it up, but, but you know, being able to speak and work through things with their broker, that's so important. Absolutely. Um, technology <clears throat> is absolutely important. Mm-hmm. Um, staying cutting edge technology, um, professional development. I mean, just all of those things that make a sure. company great. Right. Um, I'd like to believe that our companies, Realty One and Synergy Realty Network, bring that to the table. Mm-hmm. Um, There's no compromise. I don't think so. In the, the, in the days past, I think there was compromise. You, you had a choice. You get a conservative um, split, but you get all the, all the bells and whistles, or you get all your commission or most of it, but you don't have any support. No, nobody's, you kind of stuck on a back, back alley or whatever. Mm-hmm. But now we're bringing those things all together where there's no reason I mean, that's, not to consider it, like, at least take no a reason. look at it, like consider <laughs> it, see right. if it's what works for you. <laughs> and, and, you know, I have to I have to give Carrie Ann a plug here because she does so many amazing, amazing things when it comes to educational, professional development for every agent in our market. Mm-hmm. And wow, there's never been a better time mm-hmm. to, and, and you know me, I'm a big professional development junkie. I have all of the certifications that no one knows what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> and and <laughs> I'm a life learner, you know, lifelong Amen. learner till Amen. the end. Yes. Right. And so it's exciting for me, someone really prof- passionate about professional development to see, you know, to be able to partake in what Carrie Ann is offering. It's so exciting. So, mm-hmm. So I do think in many ways it's wise to look outside your brokerage mm-hmm. because um, professionals like Carrie Ann that look to other industries, there's so much to learn from that. Absolutely. Well, see, yeah. Michelle, I, I really believe that that's part of the reality of our world of why I think Dwayne was cutting edge when, see, back in the day when I got involved, way back in the Stone Age, back in the night, uh, early 80s when I got my license, you're, you're really dependent on the broker to be the gatekeeper of all the information. Mm-hmm. And then one time, I don't know, a few years into it, <clears throat> I went to a Tommy Hopkins seminar, okay? Tommy Hopkins was like one of the originals. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I came back all pumped up because I'd gotten more out of that experience than anything my broker had ever done for me. And no offense to my broker, but he held up two pieces of paper when I got my license. One, this is what a contract looks like filled out. This is a blank one, <laughs> make this one look like that one. That was my training. Right. He said, there's your pencil, there's your desk, there's your phone, go get them, boy. You know, hang in there. You know, that was my, you know, go get them and hang in there. That was all my, that was all he could share with me sure. is go get them and, and hang in there. <clears throat> Excuse me, but but I was hungry, like you're talking about. I was hungry to learn. Mm-hmm. Somebody years ago handed me a Zig Ziglar book and said, uh, well, I, I was at a situation where I was not doing well. I was a laid off power, a power truck driver. My my socks were showing through my bottom of my shoes. <laughs> he handed me a dollar, $100 bill and a, and a Zig Ziglar book. He said, Monty, go buy yourself a, sho- a, a new pair of shoes. You'll feel better about yourself. And he handed me that book that totally changed my life. It made me hungry to learn from learn more. And so I became that self-learner that you're talking about. <clears throat> and back in the day, I think that a lot of the agents were looking at the broker as their resource. But in today's world, like you're mentioning, you can you can dial up how many different resources of right. information. I mean, the internet now. So yeah. how do you justify? I mean, how do you all? How do you continue to justify as a, a real estate professional leaving too much on the table, whatever that is? And that's somebody's own conviction. But it's harder and harder nowadays to be okay with leaving that large amount on the table. And you know, I encourage agents that I meet along. If that's what they want to do, I encourage yeah, them. If that's a sure. good fit for them, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, for you know, we have about 160 agents, and for your agents, I think it's just a different mindset. Those agents want to be able to have more say so. So let's just say, for example, a, a top producing agent um, contributed uh, 
forty thousand dollars last year to their brokerage. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And but still at it going into 2020, starting all over again, she still needs to if she's a smart businesswoman and she is very smart, she needs to invest in her clients. Right. She needs to invest in her own marketing, branding herself. Mm-hmm. Right. And in many cases, you know, she's going to need to invest in purchasing leads. Mm-hmm. Right? right. So um, it's just a lot to consider. I think that Every agent in our market should at least look at their PL, look at their budget, look at their return on their investment, and seek to understand if that's what they want to do long term. Mm-hmm. I think I've, you're making me think. I got, I got a new class. Thinking. I mean, just talking about a PL, running a business like a business. Right. You know, I yes. mean, for me as a manager with loan officers, I pay a certain comp plan. I say you're the CEO of your own business. You have the ability to take this comp, which is higher than the average you know, person out there and be able to do whatever you need in, compl- in, uh, as, in a compliant way, you know, but yes. have that flexibility because um, when I take that away from them, you know, they're just going to be a worker bee, not so much, you know, having that go get, get, get her attitude, you know, out there. And it's so true, Carrie. And, and something that, you know, we've come to realize is that at the end of the day for agents needing support mm-hmm in getting their business off the ground and, and getting the flow and getting to sure. where they can really consider how their PL is working for them. They need something that I think is invaluable to their success. That's time. Time. They need someone who's going to take time with them mm-hmm. to help them understand how to implement mm-hmm. the system and processes to building their business. Sure. And I think sometimes when you hear 100%, you think that... There, it comes with no time, you know, it doesn't right. come with any support, you right. know, and, you know, I have to do it all myself. I'm on a big, you know, island and I'm doing it all myself. But you guys both provide, like you were referencing, not only the time, the products, the support, you know, the empowerment, the coaching, et cetera, et cetera, and the technology, which is amazing. It is. What, what, <clears throat> excuse me. One of the things I always recommend our, our agents do is that work that came from a split. Let's say they came from an 80 20 split, for instance, that had a, Eighteen thousand dollar cap, for instance, as an example, we tell them, "Look, keep yourself on that split because you're used to that, and reinvest that other money that you were giving to your brokerage. Invest that in your business the way you want to see it run, and see if that doesn't look different twelve months from now, twenty four oh, months." That's from a good now. idea. I mean, it's yeah. to- it, don't put it in your pocket. That's not the goal. The goal is let that difference compound in your life and help your 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 future. It's so true, Monty, and and you know um, as we're not trying to help everyone find their place in the entire world. We're just trying to help (gasps) the agents and their clients, right? Because think about this, the agents that affiliate with our brokerages on a different business model, we believe are more empowered to serve their clients. And, you know, how is that? So how is that? Well, we, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. There is becoming more pushback on the listing side to I want a reduction. You know, I want you're a so discount. sweet. I'm really surprised that you <laughs> just went ahead and just bit that elephant. You're so sweet, Michelle. You were so you you didn't want you know I wanted to come on, have you come on and just talk about you know Synergy Network. That was my goal here. And some brokers have said, why why are you promoting other brokers? Just well because again, first of all, I'm showing the universe that I'm coming from a place of abundance. Sure. Yeah. In this case, I wanted to talk about the 100 percent model. Okay. And and I, I know we both can agree on uh, even though our b- models are a little bit different. Yep. Not yep. not really not much. But I, that's why I wanted you to, and I, I, she's so sweet. I'm surprised she talked about that elephant in the corner of the room. You but know? it's there. We can't ignore mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And as as the industry is changing and tech, with the technological advancements, and, and, and this isn't even a, a new technological advancement, Zillow and Redfin mm-hmm. and, and those websites, the consumer is gravitating to those. We can't ignore well, that. Got, it's true. You know, Open Door and Loan has $1.4 billion that they're throwing at their marketing. Mm-hmm. I don't have that. Do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, nor nor do our, our agents, nor no. does any agent in no. this market. But at the end of the day, Monty, I, th- I think that just for us, technology, I come from a technology background, mm-hmm. so I can understand the Xeroxes and the Fortune 500s and the Cisco and the Oracle, and yeah. what goes into software development is huge. huge. Mm-hmm. It's very time-consuming, it's very labor-intensive, and oftentimes when those software apps have been developed and rolled out as betas, mm-hmm. that's old news. 
So for us, we find empowerment in the agent and and us as a brokerage in going out and seeking the technology that's relevant to the marketplace that's working. Mm-hmm. One example of that is Real Scout. Mm-hmm. Or Monty, are you guys? Yeah, we are. You're We're, using yeah, Real Scout, absolutely. and we absolutely. are too. Mm-hmm. And Zero uh, Real Real Scout is an an outstanding platform. So right. what it does is it you know right now when the agents are in that Zillow world and that Redfin world. Mm-hmm. It's not accurate. It's you know it's all over the place, or it may it's promoting other agents, right? Well, right. this this system doesn't do that. It, this system does not do that. It, it it's a collaboration tool, and, and I, I would like to give a shout out to Real Scout and hope that every brokerage in town signs <laughs> up, wouldn't you, Monty? It's a great tool. It really <laughs> is. It allows agents to collaborate with their clients mm-hmm. on real time properties um and it it can also it takes it a step further than that the buyer graph is an outstanding tool so you hear a lot in our industry about artificial intelligence yeah. and a one you know ai and all that well what this does is it's capturing that buyer data mm-hmm. puts it into a graph so for agents that have listings mm-hmm. that they you know it's oftentimes hard to come up use the comps and what does the market want sure, right? right so how incredibly invaluable is it to take up that buyer data this buyer graph be able to then use that data to advise sellers on on what the majority of buyers are looking for oh, so wow. they can make adjustments with pricing or right. different and it things does that. it Ama- does that amazing. it's an amazing tool and and um Monty and I are very excited to be part of that. <laughs> it's a great, it is a great tool. Let's go back to the white elephant, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody likes to eat a wild white elephant one bite at a time, right? But anyway, so here's my conviction on that on that topic, Michelle. My my belief is, as these disruptors continue to force that you you mentioned it already. You mentioned that the that the consumer is so, in in a larger group in a larger uh, numbers. The consumer's having a challenge believing that that listing side of the transaction is worth 3%. Let's just, I'm just going to say it, or th- let's say a range. Okay, let's say. Can we say 3%? Three, can we say that legally? <laughs> yeah, we can. I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just, because I'm not yep, saying yeah, we, that's yeah. anything right. other than that's, they're having a hard time with that. They are absolutely having I mean, a hard time with that. I mean, they are having a hard time believing that we're worth that. Now, you and I, I know I can, I can't speak for you. I know if anybody in Middle Tennessee can argue that I'm worth at least 4% or 5%. <laughs> I can, okay? But the reality of the situation, the consumer doesn't care about what I think mm-hmm. I'm worth. It doesn't care about what you think you're worth. And as as these as these disruptors continue, we're going to see the average dollar the average commission amount decrease. It just it just it's happening right now. Well, and, and if you take and when you say disruptor, we we may want to clarify that just a little mm-hmm. bit. So, what is the real disruptor? The the real disruptors are technology. 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 That's our disruptor. Zillow and Redfin and um, you know, those are the disruptors and the consumer. We have one in the mortgage space too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Something goes fast yeah, up in the um, sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we <laughs> And and we need to adapt to that. We need to provide the consumer with what they what they want, sure. right? And technology. the best way to do that is to adopt the technology, and to increase our knowledge base to become more of a consultant mm-hmm. to be able to take that data and put that in a into a format, convey that to the clients mm-hmm. in a way that they can understand. It's a lot of data. It's a lot to you know take right. in. And when we're talking about our our commission rate, whatever that may be, based on the average price of home selling in our market, and you look at the marketing platforms that we have today, we should be concerned that the consumer's not happy with that. We should. Because what are we, I mean, you know, really, I want to believe that we're bringing all of the best tools, but if we're not impacting the consumer's perception of that, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And that's what it comes down to. Is everybody's dialed into WIIFM? What's in it for me? And their perception is they're questioning our value. Again, you know, my our goal at, at, at our office is to always, always in every situation, make sure that the consumer knows that you're you're a worthy hire, not a necessary extra expense like that, like those technology companies would like us to believe or like the consumer to believe. Okay, that we're an absolute value on every transaction. We're a much needed value. And not just the hug at the end of it. There's a lot more that we do than that. You know, I mean, that's, that's, and, but back to my belief is that we're driving the, the technology. That's the, that is the disruptor. That's driving the, the perceived value down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my point is, I think that as a real estate professional, 
capturing a higher percentage of what you can capture of that commission rate, whatever that commission rate is, only is going to become more important. Whether that rate is 1%, 2%, 3%, whatever it is, capturing a higher percentage of that, certainly not leaving, you know, 20 grand on the table, whatever, just because it's going to become uh, paramount. It's it's imperative. And I'll tell you, if if it can, the the higher the number can be, that's great. As long as there's a value proposition there that resonates with the client. And I think that the technology is one way to do that, but there's still a lot of boots on the ground required. If I could encourage agents um, to do anything as a luxury home marketing specialist, and and all of the homes really in our market are luxury, all of them are, Mm -hmm. is to really commit to taking the best tools, the best presentation tools, the best data analytics with you and make that part of your business. Um, you just really can't do too much when it comes to that. Um, yeah, that's huge. I, I was looking for a quote. I can't find it really fast. But, you know, they talk about just increasing your value. You know, I, went, I listened to another gentleman. Our commission... Wait, do you have time to listen to anybody? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I get up early. Um, but... Our, our commission is contingent on the client being happy and crossing the finish line. That's right. Right? So we're going to do everything in our power, whether it's me or somebody in, in real estate or in lending, we're going to do everything in our power to show our worth, to provide as much value as, as we can. You know, I'm not required to do all of the extra things that I do, but I wanted to be known as somebody who really provided more value, you know, and in, in, in my worth was shown, not because of... Um, maybe somebody saw the per unit dollar, you know, when it comes to the the lending, but what are we providing for your consumer in a, in a value add, um, and an education add, you know, we go the extra step. We're not just a text me and I'll get you a loan concept, you know? Um, and so I think that's the struggle, the world, the culture has changed. Literally, I get more text messages. I need loan. <laughs> like where is the word, you know, and then on Facebook, you're right. I mean, if yeah. you think about it, yes. we're on social media. We're hiding behind. You might see a picture. Is it really a picture? I don't know. <laughs> right. You know, type of thing. And um, it's just interesting how the world has changed. And how do we then take them out of that framework and bring them back into look at you know? Let me show you right. um, why this social is a better the options that, that we can provide. Yeah, it's not just to push a button. Because I think certain people with the large budget have made it seem as if that's all it. Right. takes and right. that's why you know they can discount you know it but i also think the discount does provide discounted value meaning they're not going the ex- extra step they're it's more of a very easy like when it comes to lending it is a or b no one is ever going the extra step to find the true loan option because they're going with easy mm-hmm. because that's what they're getting mm-hmm. paid is just for easy so it's going to be a or b and sometimes D, E, and F or whatever other loan option that is, it's going to be the better option for that client, you know, but when they go because they turned their head because of curiosity, really creative marketing on the Mm -hmm. TV, they hit a, you know, quick app or this or that, you know, they get sucked into a world where now maybe it's the wrong type of program, you know, for them in the long run. And we have to create technology. So we as a company are trying to increase that with our mobile apps and and different, um, different things as well. But Carrie, you are still always there. I mean, you're known for really for getting hard deals done and getting those closed. And so with all the technology in the world, at the end of the day, you know, when one of our agents has a problem, they pick up the phone, they call you, you're there to, to step in and to solve those hard things. You know, the easy way is, is, it may not get your home sold faster. It may not get it sold for more money. And with the loan, it may not get you to the closing table. So sure. it's just something that everyone has to weigh out what's best. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm curious, Michelle, while well, we got you on the air here, what, uh, before we ask that question, though, let's uh, let the listeners uh, know how they can reach you. Would you share your number? Oh, yeah. And- sure. Um, it's Synergy Realty Network, um, 1585 Mallory Lane, Suite 103 in Brentwood. Um you can call our number 615-371-2424 and I will be more than happy to put you in touch with one of our most qualified agents or <laughs> if you want to talk to me about uh, real estate brokerage and strategy and being successful in real estate, um, you can reach me on my cell phone at any time, 615-260-1908. Perfect. That's you know awesome. she's serious when she gives out the cell phone. <laughs> that's right. I love that's that. Right. Was that risky? I love that. <laughs> no, that's a good <laughs> no, thing. Not at all. That's a good thing. So, I, you know, the these guys, these two guys know my nemesis, 
and I can't help but have, you know, while having, having another real estate professional in the room, can we talk about my nemesis for a second, Jim? <laughs> Let me take a wild guess. <laughs> so um, most people who have listened to this understand that I don't think that the iBuyer is a good thing for most clients, okay? Not everybody. Every once in a while, like one out of a thousand, I'm sure that that was a good choice because... I don't know, nobody else was around and I really can't find that, figure out that good choice. But what's your opinion of the, you know I talk, what I'm talking about when I say I buyer, that yes. person who, that company who comes in and, and uh, go ahead, tell me your interpretation before I tell you mine. You know, I, I can only say based on uh, my experience, you, you have a client, let's just say they're moving from the West Coast, they're, they're moving here from Reno and they're smart, intelligent, let's just say it's a luxury home buyer, 2.5 million let's just say they're very um intellectual they can do lots of research themselves and, and i realize that i buyer might not be in that price range but sure. it, it's it's a similar concept right mm-hmm. right um what i find is that while they can look at all of the data online that's available to them they are not boots on the ground if you do not know the location let's say the neighborhood the subdivision drilling on down into road noise power lines um uh, flight patterns rail you know train tracks it's a risky proposition now maybe if it's a, a real estate investment home and you know it's high risk and and they know the numbers and that's all they care about i could see that being a possible play um what about us as a seller Let's say you want to sell your home. You're in a well. Let's let's say it. Now, for instance, I I had with some folks out the other day, and was showing them new construction, and I asked the builder, "Have you heard of a company called Ribbon Homes? Are you familiar with Ribbon Homes?" I am. I've actually um, dealt with them before. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Well, she said, "No, our our recommendation is that they go talk to Open Door." And I said, "Why would you say that?" I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure I want to sell one of your homes now. I mean, this is what I told her. If you're going to recommend a company who's going to rip my clients off, I'm not sure. And I'm sorry. I know that's, I know that's really direct to say that. But when I, I see time after time after time people losing twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 when they're dealing with a, that, that quick solution, and then to have a builder recommending, well, we don't, we don't, and they didn't know anything about Ribbon Home, so now they do. Mm-hmm. And now Fantastic. they, now the they understand. The lack of education yeah, is just yes. getting people yeah. It gets twisted. them sideways, mm-hmm. and, and Ribbon Ribbon Homes is a fantastic product co- solution mm-hmm. for some buyers. Right. You know, for, yeah. They don't want to have that contingency. They want to get into that home. It's a fantastic product, but you know, I've even worked with some agents who push back, oh, Ribbon, it's not good, it's not good, it's not good, because they don't understand it. Right. No, they don't understand it. You have to understand the nuances of it, and um, you know, is it more expensive? Yes, it can be for the buyer, but that's not our role. We're not financial advisors on what they should and shouldn't do about their finances and when it comes to it, purchasing a home. It's actually not that more expensive when working with me because I have a connection with Ruben. Yeah, let's talk awesome. about that for a second. Yeah, that I mean, was a segue yeah. to talk about that. Yeah. You might, are well, you okay about talking about yeah, that? Yeah, but, but, but uh, you know, being a business owner and thinking like a business owner, you're and you see something that is so great that I think that can help the community, mm-hmm. um, you know, the real estate community and the buyers, it makes sense to have that sit down and talk about strategy and how you can help even more families, you know, for us. And if you're able to get closing costs covered on the upfront to cover yes. you know, their particular fee and we work on it, we discount our closing costs, but we also set it up to make sure that, you know, we, we might already have your interest rate locked in with the interest rates as low as they are. Sometimes you might only be looking at a flip within a 60 day period, you know, on a construction, excuse me, on a, um, a conventional type of loan, but if it's an FHA loan, we do have to wait the 91 days. But how do we position it so it doesn't make the client, it you know, um, cost more money? You know, there's options there for them. And that is really good information, uh, Carrie Ann. You know, I did a, a flip home. We had an investment property. We did a flip. I worked with a ribbon home buyer. It worked out beautifully. Um, it's a good solution, um, and we definitely need to seek to understand. It, it's a collaboration with not just the listing agent and the buying agent. It's also, like you just said, the lender as well. Everyone yeah. coming together to find a solution to get to the closing table. But And, and that's the key of right. why I like ribbon so much. Because they're the one of the only entities out there, certainly offering this kind of service, but that are not trying to get rid of you and I. Right. We're all one team together. They they see our importance. 
they're not trying to go around to see the, one of the challenges I had initially with that, that other company, what was it called? Closed window. Mm-hmm. Is that what it was? <laughs> Something like that. Um, when I went into to one of their homes to show at one time, they had this stack of propaganda on their kitchen uh, counter. And it said it was encouraging. First of all, they've taught the consumer how to go in the door without us. Okay, that mm-hmm. was part of our job security. Now they just dial in a code and that, that unrepresented consumer can go in that front door. Now, why would a company want that? Well, there's not quite as much accountability probably, it might be one reason, but then anyhow, they pick up this, pro- this I shouldn't say propaganda, that would sound like I'm not for it. Let's say this, this um, brochure, okay. Okay? <laughs> and the brochure says, well, you can bring your agent if you want, or we can help you and we'll give you a three day late stay when you sell your home, just buy and sell with us. Here, here's here's a startling statistic, okay? And I looked at these numbers multiple times. First of all, and I'm, and I'm sorry, guys, I know we talked about this before, but I don't think that everybody knows or they still wouldn't be getting the traction they're getting. Every 24 minutes, this company buys a home. Mm-hmm. that we're, This closed window, every 24 minutes, they buy a home in this country. And they're only in about six different markets, mm-hmm. all right? They, they are typically... Uh, taking somewhere between 10 and $30,000 from the consumer. They're, they're, and they're dredging out of those neighborhoods, okay? Mm-hmm. What people don't realize is because they'll, they'll look, I've had agents say, well, they can't sustain the, the loss. And I said, well, you don't know the numbers. Mm-hmm. That's the problem because they're seeing what's on the tax records. If the tax records may show 286,000, for instance, on one of them that I sold, mm-hmm. their real sale price was 265. Because they they had eleven thousand dollar carrying charge and another eleven thousand mm-hmm. five hundred sure, repair right. charge, mm-hmm. which they never did those repairs. Okay, so those are those are uh, the real numbers, and that's part of why why I still want to make sure that the consumer or the and the agents, because a lot of these a lot of the problem is the agents aren't educated. Right, and you know that's the key. Let's educate. Let's get everyone educated to the best of our ability and understanding. And and one. A thing I think I see with is it open window? Yeah, close window. <laughs> close window. <laughs> is that um, the consumer, the agents don't understand, and the consumers don't always understand sure. that there are ways to handle some of those costs up front. Mm-hmm. For the seller to get that property ready, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And those are available to, I mean, it's available to our agents. I know it's available right, to your agents. Right. And, and mm-hmm. I know that Carrie Ann has a lot of ideas about how to make that work. So sure. that is that is for every, available to everyone. But we have to educate ourselves on that program and rolling it out and helping the consumer, the sellers understand because they get so overwhelmed with the repairs and they don't understand their equity that's going to come back to them on the back end. Mm -hmm. So they just, I think in desperation, they work with this company because they don't fully understand. Well, it yanks the bandaid off. I mean, they're speaking to pain points. One of them is certainty. Mm -hmm. They know it'll happen. Second of all, they're in control. They can pick the date that it happens. I get that value of that, but as professionals, we can do the same thing. We can absolutely do the same thing. And when you take a list, just, you know, going back to our 100% commission model, when you have more money to work with, guess what? You can better serve your clients through Mm -hmm. that. That's what I was getting to. Absolutely. You can. And it empowers you. You Use the word earlier, empower. Mm -hmm. When When a real estate professional has all the commission that there is on the, on the line, they're empowered. Yes. They're empowered to do things that others aren't if they don't. No offense to anybody, but it makes a difference if you've got the whole 100% to work with. And, and you know, it. there's going to be some agents, let's just be honest, there's going to be some agents who don't want to give any of that, and that is okay. That sure. is totally sure. Nobody's okay. Nobody's suggesting they do. Yeah, I'm just right. saying you have that option now. And that's an option, but there's also other options to provide these services to get these repairs oh, done. Oh, absolutely, yes. I'm not, and, yeah. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. you know, yeah. that, that I don't think that's a topic for another day, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but, you know, the power of marketing, it's its amazing. It's huge. Right? I mean, these people are marketing and turning heads, creating enough curiosity mm-hmm. that is getting these cl- clients to, to make a move. What we need to do is continue with our marketing and continue to educate you know some clients come to us and i know i don't have the right program for them yes i know that i can give them a better loan if i went to my local bank because i know the time frame this this this. yes so because i am a professional i love that about you i make the decision to call who i know that i'm well networked with and i become the um, person that is the facilitator between the two parties and I make sure everybody's still happy mm-hmm. and I didn't make a dollar mm-hmm. on that transaction. But again, you're at a place in your career 
where that is the right decision. And I think if we educate more of the clients, the client comes to you, you educate them, and maybe there is a decision to go left or go right, or utilize the services you yes. know that you were talking about to be able to maintain it here and, and cut that. Because sometimes it is the right move to, you know, lessen this or you know change yes. change paths you know yes. type of thing so knowledge is power that's uh-huh. what we say knowledge is power learning more educating ourselves to know you know new programs come out and sometimes we have a handful just a few agents that come and they don't want to know about the new product i would want to know everything a guideline changes i sit i'm the first who sit and learn and i want to know everything about that guideline change inside we, and out we, we try uh-huh. and encourage our agents that look the more uh, more options you know the wider the top of that funnel is yeah. you're going to find other opportunities just because you have that knowledge base that you didn't huge, have before huge Big solution deal. selling i mean that's that's right that's mm-hmm. what it's all about i love mm-hmm. that this was a really Solving great great uh podcast with you miss michelle thank you so much for being here we really enjoyed it i loved getting to talk to other people in the industry i do too you? and again shout out to mr Dwayne. okay for being a cutting edge guy out there and thank you ahead of the curve here we're going to see more uh, 100% companies coming to town, I'm sure. Yes. Just because, again, the uh, cat's out of the bag now. The The information is available to, you know, that without, you know, spending the money in, in the office. You know, you, you can, you've got, you know, all the tools without uh, having to pay for them, basically. Without you know? sacrifice. Without That's sacrifice. That's the key, yes. Without compromise. <laughs> and so, anyhow, I do want to, want to make sure he knows that I do appreciate his uh forward thinking and and the efforts and that's one of the reasons why again we wanted to have you on the show because i want to show my appreciation and gratitude to be with the future of real estate today and that's what we're that's what we're talking about this is the future of real estate available today Mm -hmm. thank you for that michelle thank you and just a big shout out to everybody and our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody who's been affected by all the tornadoes that happened this past Mm -hmm. week we just continue to pray for for everybody and their families and hope um i know our city is strong Mm -hmm. uh we did it once we'll do it again we'll come back um bigger and better right so just lots of prayers out to everybody there so Thanks again for listening to the Talk of Music City. For more podcasts, please be sure to visit talkmusiccity.com.